what's going on fellow game developers my name is muddy wolf and in today's video we are going to be building our shop to actually spend the currency we made in the last game so oh the last video sorry not game so the first thing we are going to do is create a ui which is going to handle our shop so what we're going to do is go to ui and we're just going to create canvas and we'll leave it at that we're just going to change the scale with screen size to match its aspect ratio um, it's at 0.5 this is just so it looks a little or well basically so it scales nicer with the screens now inside of the canvas we're going to create an empty game object called menu which we are going to stack to the left side of the screen and we're going to make it about 200 pixels wide you know what let's say 300 it probably would work 300 or 250 300 250 we're gonna go with 250 i like 250 we're just we're coming up with the idea anyway then we want to get a ui button in here now if you don't have text mesh pro just install it it'll pop up on the screen and what we're going to do with this button we're going to call this the menu toggle now with the menu toggle we're just going to set this to something like 200 wide actually not 150 250 there we go that will do and we are going to set this to the bottom right we're going to set this to the bottom right of the screen and then we are just going to give it the position of about 220 pixels giving you a little bit of space from our menu now inside of our menu or on our menu we're going to add in an actual image this image is just going to be used as a background so what we're going to do is we're not going to put a source image in we're just going to leave it this and just put 124 again you can style your menu however you want this is just the way we're going to do it so you can see here what it looks like and actually i think i want the menu at 300 wide you could also notice that when this menu moves the button does too which is exactly what we want now on the menu toggle button what we're going to do is just say uh menu on here and you know what we are going to make this smaller we're going to set it to 150 and move this to 170 like that just to make it a bit smaller we'll also make the text bold um and maybe a little bigger just to go fit up there we'll say 32 Okay, so in game you can see we've got a little menu there i'm also going to bring that button off the ground maybe by 20 and there you go that's looking a lot better so we'll be able to click this button and we'll set something up for this button to work but back to our menu now inside of this menu we want a couple of things now i'm going to create a ui text mesh pro i'm going to call this we're just going to say shop and we're going to stick this dead at the top center and we will also make the text center and we'll just bring it down minus 20 pixels to bring it from the top we'll make it bold and i also want this to be black so you go that's looking pretty good um we then want to i'll just rename this to title underneath this let's just have a look in the scene view here underneath this we want another one and this is going to be our currency so we'll be able to see what our currency is now i'm just going to move this to minus um 90 which should be about 20 pixels under this we're then going to bring this full width full width and we're just going to set this to be the center there and we're going to start off with um zero there because we're going to be updating this inside of our level manager now we've actually got this what i want to do is create one more thing in the menu and this is going to be another empty object which we are going to use to fill the screen then i'm just going to bring it down to about 100 120 120 fits it there so now we can fit the rest of the screen in here now i'm going to call this the actual shop um, and this is where our items will be we can actually get now i want to make this into a grid element so what i'm going to do on the right here is i'm going to create a grid layout group um where we are going to set the cell size to probably be about 200 by 50 and then i'm going to create a ui button which is going to be our shop item for now um and this should if we select this we're going to set this to the upper center there we're going to add spacing on the y and also 20 pixels padding on top and bottom of this just to give it all some spacing now this first shop item is going to be our um basic turret which we're going to be able to buy so in here we'll just say basic turret 
So the nice thing about this now is if we create another one, it'll automatically lay out our buttons all in here, which looks very nice. I also just want to make sure we set the basic turrets navigation to none because we don't want to be moving around with tab or anything like that. We just want to use our mouse. Now for the pub for the pubs of this shop, there we're going to create a new turret, which we are going to call the test turret which we are just going to change the values we're just going to make its target in range 5 its rotation 200 but its bullets per second half so or maybe even 10 so it has a large sniper rate this is basically a sniper essentially is what we're creating and this turret is going to be one we add to our level manager and our build manager so just take the test turret and drop it here however we're actually going to be changing this so let's create a new script which we're going to use and we're going to call this script our uh, a tower now let's double click this tower to open it up in visual studio code and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove mono behavior because it's not needed we'll also remove the using tags we also need to set this as serializable but to do that we need the using the system tag now inside of our tower we want to set up a way of actually setting our tower so we're going to create a pub or oh, sorry giving it a name so we'll go public string name we also want a public int cost for how much this actually costs and finally we're going to have a public game object which we are going to call our um, tower prefab or we could just call it prefab because this will be wrapped in the tower class anyway we don't want to create a public tower which will take in a string which will be a name we'll also pass in an integer which will be the cost and also we need to pass in the game object which will be the prefab and then we'll just set all of these to match their relevant um, counterparts and there you go this is all we need to actually create um, a usable um, system here so now we've got our tower what we want to do is go to our build manager script and we want to where we've got our tower prefabs we're actually going to change this we're going to use a serialized field private tower array which we are going to be called towers and then what we'll do is pass our towers and actually get the selected towers that way and this will also bring back a tower instead of a game object and we can remove the old reference now if we go back to UT and let this compile we should be able to put in the thing but we have an issue oh the issue actually is coming from the plot.css uh, script so let's open this up and actually go down to our uh, tower to build and we're actually going to change this to tower then when we get this we actually want to say tower to build dot prefab to actually get the spawnable prefab although we are going to change some of this soon but this will still work so we'll leave that there and we'll get to this in a moment so back in ut this should now compile without any issues and we should be able to set our towers so you can see we're going to get an element and we can give this the name basic turret you can name this whatever you want the cost is going to be 100 and the prefab will be our basic turret we'll then create the test turret uh, which will set to 150 in cost and actually pass through the test turret there as well. Now, one thing we need to do is actually set our uh, shop um, currency here. So what we're going to do is on our menu, we're going to add a menu class. Now we're going to open this component inside our Visual Studio Code and we're going to set up a header called References. And inside the references, we are going to have a text mesh pro instance. But to do that, we need to be using TM Pro. So now we're going to set up a serialized text mesh pro U GUI called the currency UI. Now inside of on GUI, we're going to say currency UI is equal to the level manager dot main dot currency. 
then we'd fix this by saying to string so it actually converts into a string instead of an integer. And also I've missed out the dot text on the GUI here just to fix that. There we go. Now that's all working. Now in our menu, we actually just need to bring in our currency UI and let's just test this is working. So to test this is working, all we're going to do is just hit play and start destroying some of the enemies. And we should see this updates to 100. And if we place a few turrets here, when the enemies start rolling through, we should start destroying them and getting more points. Now, yeah, you go, we can see our currency is going up and up and up, and now will continue to go up until we reach, um, well, until forever, until we decide to spend the money. Now, obviously, when we buy turrets, it doesn't actually spend any money, so we need to actually allow for that. Now we want to duplicate this turret to match the amounts of turrets we currently have. So I just want to set in here test turret, which is going to obviously be our test turret we have set here. In here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this to test turret. Like that. And there you go. Now we have a basic turret and a test turret, but we need to actually select a turret now inside of our build manager what we want to do is go and create a new public void which we're going to call a set selected tower now this is going to get an integer which we are going to be called a selected tower or probably like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to say selected tower is equal to the new selected tower then back inside a unity, we want to go to our menu and double click menu to open up in Visual Studio Code. We then want to create a public set or public void set tower or set selected. And in here, this is where we're going to sort the UI. What we we'll do is go back to Unity and go to our towers. Now what we want to do is add a click event from our level manager object and go to build manager and go set tower. Now basic tower is set to zero, which is correct. What we want to do is do the same for our test turret here and go to build manager, set tower and set this one to one. This will change it from being the test tower to being uh, sorry, from being our basic turret to being our test tower turret. Also, with our test tower turret, what I'm going to do is I am going to go to our base and I'm just going to make this like some odd color, maybe blue. Yeah, blue seems to work the best here. So we'll go purpley blue here um, and then we'll get our actual gun and we'll make it maybe this blue. We'll make it purple just just to make it look different so we can actually see the difference when we place our turrets down now let's just hit play and actually test this works so what i want to do is place a couple of turrets select a test turret and then place that turret go back to the basic turret and there you go you can see we can now switch between the turrets we're actually using and actually allow them to place however we're still not currently spending any money when we try to place these tower turrets to spend money we want to head over to our plot and the first thing we're going to do in here is obviously we're checking if tower is not equal to null then we're returning obviously sorry if it is if it's not equal to null then we'll go return because that means there's a tower already here but we also want to check if the cost of our tower to build so to do so we say if tower to build dot cost is greater than our level manager dot main dot currency then we want to actually return but before this we'll just go debug dot log you can't afford this tower now this will obviously be, be something you're supposed to show on screen and not debug but we'll leave this for now and we can add ui to this later if needed and once we've done this if this doesn't come back what we want to do is go to level manager dot main dot spend currency and then we're going to pass through the tower to build dot cost and this will take the currency away and then we will spawn our tower in so let's go back to our game manager and actually see if this is working so when we hit play we should be given a amount and if we select test turret and try to place it, you see it says you cannot afford this tower so we need to switch to the basic turret 
and place but we can only place one so you can see that's there and then when we make more money we'll be able to place a second turret but we can, still cannot play well we can now because we can afford it but look once we place that it takes us 150 and we can't place enough for one until we earn the right amount of money and that is our shop system working now there's one more thing we're missing you probably know at the start i added this menu in and the reason i've got this toggle here is because this currently covers part of our screen and that's not super cool so we want to show and hide this menu to do so we're actually going to go to our menu and add in an animator then we want to open a window inside for animation called the anim oh, not the animator that is a useful window but we want the actual animation window which we'll just stick to the bottom for now then inside of our menu we want to create a new animation we're going to r and create a new folder which we're going to call animations or animation it should have been animations but i misnamed it so that's what we're sticking with and I called it new animation as well. I'm really failing with this naming. This should be menu open. And there you go, you see we have menu open now. And what we could do is select our menu, hit this, and this will open our menu. So the, our menu should by, be by default minus 300. Then once we get to 30, we can set this to zero, bringing it in. Now you should be able to see this in action. You can see it slides out, um, which is perfect. So that's good. But now we need to close this. So let's create a new clip, which we are going to be calling menu close, um, where we will obviously close our menu. Now this should start like this, which is great. So just hit record and go over to the 30 mark and then just set this to minus 300. Now you can see here, this will do the opposite of what we had in the open. Now what we need to do is go into our animator, um, again, rename this to menu open, um, and we wanna to go to our parameters list and create a Boolean called menu open. Now, here we'll have both of these set but we want to double click them and turn off their loop time because we do not need any loop now by default we're going to have our menu open itself because i feel like the menu should be open um, but then we'll be able to switch between both of these animations so what i want to do is make a transition to our menu close and we're going to check if menu open is equal to false we're going to remove the exit time and also set the transition to zero. This will just make it happen instantly. We'll then set a new transition over to our back to our menu. And this time we will check if it's true. And then the same deal with all of this. We oh, take off that and that and put that to zero. Now to toggle this, we're going to go into our menu script and we are going to get a reference to our animator. So we're going to say serialize field animator and we'll call this anim we're then going to go in we're also going to create a boolean a private ball called menu or is menu open and we'll set this to true by default we'll then go into an update method and we will set the animator dot set ball to be equal to well menu open will be equal to is menu open and actually we're going to change this do this will be calling it every frame which we don't actually need we're actually going to create a public uh void called toggle menu and in here we're going to say is menu open is equal to not is menu open which will just refer to every single time we call this and then we will set the ball inside of here inside of our animator i actually just want to set the ball to be true by default because it is actually open so we just want to set that as default to true then inside of our menu our menu toggle we want to click a fence from our menu which is going to be in our menu and toggle menu now this should hopefully work so let's hit play and we should see the menu opens and if we click it it should have closed but we forgot something in our menu we forgot to add in our own animator and there we go now let's hit play and hopefully this time it should work so there you go bit opened and if we close it we can now toggle the menu open and closed
and I just placed our one and only turret we can afford down at the bottom of the screen uh, because I missed clicking the menu. But there you go. Oh no, he's not quick enough to dis He destroyed one. Quick, make us the money back. Basic turret, we need one here. So we could have lost this. This could have been bad. But there you go. We have, we have our defenses back now. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this video. It was a little bit of a longer one, so I do apologize, but this covered quite a lot, and now we can finally buy items from our menu. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video where we are going to add a new slow motion turret that will slow the enemies instead of doing any damage. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.